dear students in this video let us understand what is meant by thermal power plants to start with let us understand what is steam power plant and why it is required in steam power plant the thermal energy is used to raise the steam that is used to run the steam turbine to produce mechanical energy now the question comes is why the steam because the velocity of the water in the pipeline maximum will get the 10 meter per second for a saturated steam will get around 20 meter per second and when it is a superheated steam it is around 40 meter per second when it is moving in the uh, steam pipelines we will get a maximum velocity and rpm can be increased this mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy in a generator means in the ec lab in the fifth sem you have seen you are not converting right the you are just checking the performance but in the real sense to have the power generation it has to be coupled with the generator the steam power plants are external combustion engine what is meant by external combustion engine external combustion engine is nothing but a engine where the power produced and combustion are integral part right if it is integral part then it is called as ic engine if it is uh, the combustion is taking place in one chamber and your prime mover in this case the turbine are in different then they are called as external combustion engine it is called as a external combustion engine so the thermodynamic cycle which works is a ranking cycle so the diesel power plant works on a diesel cycle then gas turbine works on a brighton cycle and the steam power plant works on the brighton cycle Next one, where do we find steam power plants? We find the steam power plants in a large scale production of electrical power. So steam power plants are broadly classified as cogenerative and captive power plants. The cogenerative power plants means if I am producing the steam for process and I am also using the steam for the power then they are called cogenerative plant. Here you can see some example of MRF, MRPL and West Coast paper mill. So MRF is using the steam for tire preparation right. They want uh, to make uh, the while well, making the tires they want the steam for the process. MRPL yes they have got a uh, different distillation unit they want uh, the steam as well as uh, they are producing the power west coast paper mill is a paper mill in that delhi where you produce the steam for different process unit to make the paper right the bleaching plants are there there are chlorine plants are there right so you use the steam for a different process and to of course to uh, roll on the papers we use the steam along with that one the they are also producing the power then it is a called as a cogenerative power plant they are called as a cogenerative power plant next one is what is captive power plant the power plant whose aim is to produce only the power there is no need of a process steam then they are called as a captive power plant like upcl and tata power plant why it is required because around 50 percent 50 52 percent of the power requirement of indian scenario is met by the by the steam power plants itself that's why they are playing very important role let us see what are the layout of the steam power plant the essential component of the steam power plants are turbine generator furnace water fuel handling system ash handling system dross system condensing system water cooling system and lubrication system 
Thus, let us see one by one. For the combustion to take place, we want a combustion chamber. In this case, it is a furnace. So, to combustion to take place, I want a fuel and air which has been supplied to the boiler which gives the heat and the flue gas. Right? And if you pass the water to the boiler, then we will get the, the uh, steam which is uh, initially passed to the initially passed to the turbine it is a uh, initially passed to the turbine right and from the turbine the extra steam that is a uh, will be passing to the condenser then the, this steam is a uh, passed to the mechanical energy and with the help of a gearbox reef required then it is passing through the gearbox. If the speed is around 3000 rpm, it is no need of a gearbox. It is directly coupled to the generator. And we will get the electrical energy. And it has been used to the bus bar to get the grid supply. So in this sketch, you can see this is a boiler. For the boiler, I am supplying the fuel. I am supplying Air. This is required for the combustion, right? And I am also passing the water to the system, and this water becomes a superheated steam and it is uh, go to the turbine. From the turbine, it is coupled to the generator. Now, extra excess steam. Why excess steam is required? Because we cannot, if the pressure over here is 40 kg per centimeter square, here at the end stage because it has got a number of uh, blades and the last stage cannot compress up to this one so there will be some space and it will pass to the condenser here in the condenser as you study in the ranking cycle it is in the two phase i have to convert that steam into water that's why i'm passing the it is a shell and tube heat exchanger where i'm passing the water over here and the steam goes right and uh, the steam get converted into water and pumped back for that one the hot water will go once again to the cooling tower gets cooled it is a heat exchanger and comes back to the condenser so let us understand one by one first one is a turbine generator this is a central power system heart of the any power plant right in the turbine the velocity and the pressure energy of the steam converted into kinetic energy and turbines are directly coupled to the generator so here as it has been told is directly coupled if it is the speed is a 3000 rpm if it is not 3000 rpm then surely i should have a gearbox to bring the speed to 3000 rpm because the um, Indian scenario we have got the frequency of 50 hertz and here the speed is equal to 120 120 into F by number of poles number of poles from that calculation I can the number the speed is if the speed is 3000 rpm frequency to meet the frequency 50 hertz I should have the four poles right so you just check here 1200 into 50 divided by 4 will get the speed 3000 rpm so that is a very important to know the why the, where, where, when i want a gearbox and a, when i don't want don't need a, a gearbox the steam turbine use either maybe impulse or reaction turbine and depending on the requirement whether it is i'm want uh, the steam for the um, any other process or i don't want the steam for any other process but uh, directly i want the steam for the power generation the turbine are equipped with the governing system for the get the power output next one is a furnace or a boiler here the unit of the plant where the steam is generated by burning the fuel the the type of fuel may be solid maybe liquid or maybe gaseous or a pulverized 
fuel depending on the depending on the the availability the, the combustion the combination of the fuel is also possible what is the meaning of a combination of the what is the meaning of combination of fuel it, the i can have both the liquid and solid fuel i may have both the gaseous and liquid fuel that is a possible water used to raise the steam must be free from suspended dissolved impurities means generally i am passing it to the um, cleaning unit where all the turbidity or uh, all its uh, magnesium calcium impurities have been removed and it has been passed into the turbine uh, steam uh, generator that is a uh, because i don't want any scale formations the impure water may lead to scale formation and corrosion the boiler plate and may cause foaming which is also hamper the boiler operation that's why we don't want any impurities or a scale formation if the scale formation happens your uh, tube life will be very less next one is a fuel handling system in the steam power plant generally use coal or pulverized coal as a fuel and the fuel is required in a large quantity which necessitate the fuel handling usually belt conveyor bucket elevators are used for the handling the fuel ash handling system because the the fuel which are used may be having 10 to 30% of the ash it depends once again on what type of coal you are using if you are using indigenous coal then it is around a 30% if it is a foreign coal it is a 10 to 20% this should be removed from the furnace and it should be disposed and generally you can see the railway tracks down to the furnace to remove the ash form one this is done by proper ash handling system the system used either by mechanical hydraulic or pneumatic to operate the hoppers this selection is based on the quantity of ash to be handled that's why if it is indigenous coal then the ash formation will be more and if it is a foreign coal generally the ash formation is less the trot system what is the trot system trot system is nothing but the amount of quantity of air that is required to make the pressure difference between the furnace and the outside atmosphere this trot system is either natural or mechanical system if it is a natural system then uh, uh, i should have the chimney height to be very high if it is a mechanical system the height of the chimney can be reduced the next one is a condensing system the condensing system is a higher temperature which is condensed as i told earlier it is a two phase fluid to convert into two phase into one to water i have to use the cooling water that is a shell and tube heat exchanger from where it will get converted and the efficiency of the plant generally increases by using a condenser system the water cooling system the quantity of water used condensing system is very high and should be reused in the condenser this water get heated up after condensing the steam and the water is cooled for recirculation this is done in the cooling tower when you go um, near to the higher uh, power station if you go to the upcl on the highway you can see the steams are coming out from the parabolic towers that are nothing but the heater that is rejected to the sink this is achieved by the cooling tower where it is pumped up with a high level and allowed to flow it over baffles during this one water get cooled which is pumped back to the condensing unit the last one is the lubrication system the lubrication system because they are all moving in very high speed and i want a free lubrication between the two uh, moving parts that's why i use a lubrication system a proper lubrication system is essential for moving it is a continuously the lubrication system not only avoid wear and tear 
but also uses for the cooling effect between the bearing system. The other accessories to increase the efficiency, we may have economizer, superheater, we can have desuperator, air filter, super. In detail, we are going to study all the things in the next 